Good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, I decided this morning that I'm going to make a video, and I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this digit re recognizer competition from scratch, and I'm going to do it on the video. So that way, it's a good idea to show you that I do know actually how to enter a competition. And I'm not just doing code reading things on other people's work. So we go to notebooks. And then we go to new notebook. So at the moment we're creating a new notebook. So we click on to create. So we've created our new notebook. We'll call this we'll backspace. We'll call this NMIST. And we'll call it SKLearn because we're going to um, use an SKLearn model to solve this problem. And so now what we have to do is we just have to wait for the uh, coding to actually come up. So we're going to delete all this stuff. Okay. We'll just delete all this stuff and then what we're going to do is we're going to create we're going to x that out and we're going to create some more code and go put that in there so this is a good um a good um video for somebody who's never opened a tackle He's never entered a Kaggle competition to watch because I'm doing it from scratch and I'm telling you how to do it, which is good. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say so we're going to say import files and we're going to come over here to markdown and we're going to say um load and read data sets and we're going to run it so we've ran it so now what I'm going to do just so it doesn't take too long I'm going to copy and paste a little bit from a file that I previously did just so because it'll take a really long time if I have to do all of it from scratch so I'm going to copy and paste just a tiny little bit so you'll see what I did. And then so Okay, so we're going to come up go over here we're do, using control C and then control V to paste so we're going to come over here with our sample submission do a control C Control V. Uh, we're going to copy our train. Control V. And we're going to copy our test. Control C. Control V. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some more code in here. We're going to say train. Test sample. So we're going to run it. But it didn't have a, um, it said header equals none. So I'm going to take out the header equals none. Because before on the file that I was using um, from my Google Copilot, it didn't have a header, so I had to say header equals none. And we'll run it again. So now you've got your label and you've got pixels. So you've got a 785 columns. And then if you do it, you've got 42,000 rows, 785 columns. So basically, what if you go to a, I think it's 20, 28 by 28, I think. Let's just look and see. Clear. 28 times 28 equals. So each character is 28 by 28 to give you 784 columns plus your one, um, your, your label. So this is your test file. Your test file doesn't have a label. And the sample file says image, IET, and label. So... And your image ID is actually going to be your index. So what we can do here okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check for find out what kind of file train is. So do train info, which I messed that up. Hold on a second. I X out of that. So we want to find out what kind of file train is. So train says there's 42,000 entries, 785 entries, and we've already discussed that. Now let's find out what kind of file test is. Okay. Says 20, it says 28,000, so you've got 42,000 and 28,000 so that's so it's got 70,000 entries in total so now what we want to do is we want to check for any null characters and it's always a good idea to document your work and put lots of messages in there and one thing that I personally have done is because because um you know I'm making blog post I have to document it a lot and make it very organized and easy to read because so people will want to read my blog post because I actually get paid for the blog post so there's none here there's none on trying so let's try to test so 
so that's good. We don't have any null about characters. So now that we don't have any null characters, we've looked at it. What we want to do is we want to define our x and our y values. So that's what we do. We define our x and our y values. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say, we want to come over here to where it says um, image ID. So we say, First thing we do is, well, it's best to do a little bit of copying and pasting, and that way we don't um, get syntax errors. Let's just try this out. So that's good. That worked. So now that we've got our image ID set up, So we're setting up our X and our Y, and we just got to make sure that we do this correctly. So your label is number zero. Your label is number zero. So let's try this. So we're going to do our image ID and we're going to define our X and our Y. Okay, let's give Y a try. So Y is working. Let's give our X a try. And let's give our X test a try. So we've done all that. And now what we have to do is now that we've defined our X and our Y value, we have to scale it. We have to scale what we're doing. 
So I have to come over here and just do a little bit of copy and pasting because it's easier. It's easier to do that because um, you don't make so many mistakes when you are copy and pasting. And the reason why you have to scale it to 255 is because the pixels range from 0 to 255. And I'm going to be making a blog post. And when I make the blog post, so let's just look at X, give it a try now that we've scaled it. X. Give that a try. So we scaled it. Want to see what X looks like? And then we want to see what X test looks like. But you have to scale it. If you don't scale it, it's not going to turn out correctly. So you have to you have to um, scale it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to after we scale our data, we're going to split our X data set up for training and testing. So we're going to use train to split from xklearn. And we're going to, our test size is going to be 10% because that's what I like. I like to make the training size as large as possible. And the reason why is because um, you get a better accuracy is if you have as much training data as possible. So I make my validation set 10%. Now we're going to define our model. And this worked earlier. <laughs> it worked earlier, so let's just hope that it works on Kaggle because it did work earlier. You're using SKLearns MLPC. Let's give it a try. See what happens. It did work earlier. So. We're using MLP classifier that's an SK Learn, that's SK Learn's neural network. So you don't necessarily have to use Keras or PyTorch. I don't know how to use PyTorch. I've used Keras a little bit. I find Keras really hard to use, really difficult to use. So we've got a training loss, a, we've got 100% accuracy there. So that's good, that worked. And now what we're going to do is, since we've got 100%, we're going to predict on our validation set. Okay, so we're going to predict on our validation set.
So let's see what happens when we predict. We've got a 90, almost a 97% accuracy when we predict on our validation set. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a data frame so you can compare the um, actual value against the printed value. So you can see that for yourself. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to predict on our test set. And then, you know, obviously it's better to copy and paste because if you copy and paste at least, um, At least you're not making syntax errors. So we don't need to print the score because we're not going to get a score. Uh, we'll just say Y pred. We'll say prediction. We'll say prediction. So so that worked. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get like my Titanic, just copy and paste something just so if I can see, copy and paste something really quickly. Because e it really is easier to copy and paste than it is to, you know, try to, you know, think about what it is that you're doing on, an, on a video. But we're getting to the very last bit. Okay, so I'm going to say prepare submission. Prepare submission. And we're going to say output equals image ID so let's just make sure we got it right it's image ID and label is what they want the data frame to say. So we've got image ID, image ID, and label. I want it to say submission. So we give it a try and something went wrong. So this is what went wrong. See that's why I like to copy and paste because I don't have a Arrays all have to be the same length. So let's see what we've got here. Image 
ID equals test index. So, so we'll come over here. So we'll say So look at image ID and it says 28,000 so Prediction is 42,000, so something's happened. Prediction equals model X test. So let's see what we've done here. X test equals test. So, X test is 28,000. What we'll do is we'll run it again. So it says prediction is 42,000. So how can that be if X test, if X test is, it says here X test is 42,000. Oh, here we go. That's where we made the mistake. So, so you can see, that's why I like to copy and paste everything because, um, you know, you just make mistakes, but it should work okay now. So it worked there, so let's go back to our very last line of code. So we enter the line of code and call it submit. So we run that and so this is this is our submission so now what we're going to do is we're going to save it
So we have to wait for it to save. So it is taking a little while, but if you bear with me, it'll be well worth your wait. Especially if you're new, especially if you're not really experienced in entering agro competitions. Because we're doing this from the very beginning to the very end. And so if you've never entered a capital competition, then it's good for you to watch this video to all the way to the very end. So we view it. So now that we viewed it, we can go all the way to the end of the program, very end of the program, and it says we've got our submission. So you click submission, and then you submit. You say view my submissions. Unable to find the required key value in the image ID column. So that didn't work. So we will keep trying until we get it to work. So click on to edit. come over here. What we'll do is we'll run it again just so we can see everything. And um, come over here to our sample because that's what we wanted to see. So the sample is 0 to 28,000 rows. That's your sample. And it said it was unable to find the key value of 28,000. So your image ID has to be so image ID equals test index plus one. So we're going to cancel run. And we're going to run it again. Because you see that's where we messed up, where it said this is your sample right here. Your image ID was one. And so the last one was 28,000. So that was a little trick that they put in there. And so what I did was I said, um, image ID equals test.index plus one. So we hope that it works this time. There we go, 28,000. So we've got our 28,000, which is what it wants to see. So we're going to save it. So we'll do it again. And as you can see, that what Kaggle did was Kaggle put a little trick in there. So the image, I, the, the in, test index started with zero, but the image ID started with one. But Python starts with zero. So they put that little trick in there. So you have to figure out what to do but hopefully it will the submission will be successful this time
So we view it again. So we view it again and we go all the way down. Twenty-eight thousand, which is what it wanted to see. So we submit it again. You press the submit button. We view our submission. And it was 96% accuracy. So what you can do is check your position on the leaderboard to be 96% accurate. And it said I'm 18,028. No, it said load more. <laughs> it said um, your first try. It said 1903, um, 1903. Welcome to the leaderboard. Your first try. So I've got 96, almost 97% on that, which isn't bad for a first try. So now, you know, we've done this uh, Kaggle submission from the very beginning to the very end. And you can see that I did the digit recognizer and I used SKLearn to solve it. So um, if you've never entered a Kaggle competition before, then you know that you can do it. And what I'll do here as I'll come over here to my submissions. And I'll come over here. And I'll share my page. So I'll make it public. So if you want to look at it, you can look at it. So that's it for this presentation. If you like my presentation, please like, subscribe, and share. If you want to continue receiving my videos, please press on the little bell button because um, I just heard that if you don't watch the videos, then after a while, YouTube will unsubscribe you. So if you press the bell button, you'll receive all of my videos. If you like my work and you want to support me, um, I've got my email address to my PayPal account in the description box down below. And the reason why is because I don't have enough subscribers, which is why I have to ask for donations. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.